So I've had a couple of guys message me, send me emails. They've been cheated on. They want to know why women cheat and I definitely want to help out. First of all, I want you to stop watching this video. Just turn it off. If you're not willing to take 100% responsibility for your part played, 100% 100% responsibility for your life and the results that you have. I know it's her fault. She made the decision. She cheated. But I promise you, you had a part to play in it. The other thing is that there's no point of taking on the mindset of this, you know, men going their own way and red pill movement, whatever nonsense this is. First of all, that's not going to get you the results you want. And quite frankly, it's a cowardly and immature way of looking at life. If you want to master the game of sex and relationships and turn the game in your favor, then continue to watch this video right to the end because I'm going to give you some things that you can do right away in your life that's going to help you become a man that women want. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Nikula Daz and I help men master their sexual energy so you can become a powerhouse both in and outside the bedroom. Go to the description and register for my upcoming webinar, Sex Mastery 101, where I'm going to be showing you the techniques of a sexual alchemist and I'm going to be sharing with you how you could become an attractive man so that women want to be with you and they don't ever want to cheat on you. The first thing to understand is that everybody is different. So placing all women, like that whole mindset of all women are the same, that's just a bunch of nonsense. That's an excuse from weak men. What you want to do is understand that everybody's different. Just like men are different. I'm sure you know, you've met different guys, even here on YouTube. You know, guys within this space talking about semen retention and relationships and tantra. Right? We all present it a bit different. Why? Because we're all different. So just like guys are all different, women are all different as well. Just because you've been cheated on once or maybe even several times. I know guys who've constantly been cheated on. This is where you have to take 100% responsibility. You have to recognize that there's something going on in you that is allowing this result to happen. There's no point of sitting around, placing the blame on women, hating women. You know, you want to be with a woman, but yet you hate women. How's that going to happen? There's no point of doing that. And there's no point of making excuses. Oh, I wish I was born in a different country. I wish I had more money. I wish I was better looking. I wish, I wish, I wish. No, you have to drop all that. And you have to control the controllables. So what do I mean by controlling the controllables? Well, let's say, look, women like tall men. Generally, tall men are attractive to a lot of women. Not all men are tall. I'm not a tall man. Doesn't matter. Because if you control the controllables, so for instance, you're not a tall guy as an example, but it shouldn't be an excuse to let yourself go. Oh, all women like tall men. Now I'm just going to watch porn all day, masturbate and, you know, eat garbage food all day and get fat. No, there's no point in taking on that lifestyle. What you want to do is control what is in your ability control. So you're never going to be a tall guy. Fine. Here's the deal. You can control The fact that if you work out or not, you can work on your physique. You can work on your focus and determination. You can work on your confidence and charisma. And all of these signs are going to make up for anything that you think that you lack. You know what's really interesting is it's funny. The thing that you think might be your detriment, some women is going to love. For instance, you may think I'm a short guy. No one's going to date me. And you're going to find a woman because you've got all the controllables under control that's going to be super attracted to you because you're giving all the signs of a leader. Women are attracted to leaders. They're not attracted to men who are sitting around complaining, watching porn all day, doing nothing, being lazy. You want to control the controllables. And as you bring the controllables under control, it's a lot of control here, right? That you're ultimately going to be giving off all the signs of an attractive man. Make a plan, start working that plan. And as you learn and get better, adjust your plan and continue to improve. Also, I just want to mention, don't be a sucker. What I mean by that is, and I'm sorry to my spiritual friends because I know normally we don't talk like this, but stop putting the pussy on a pedestal. There are plenty of beautiful, 
smart, intelligent, funny, loyal women in the world. The, the world is abundant of women. So stop chasing and start attracting by becoming a man that women want to be with. When you become a leader and you stop blaming and you stop complaining, naturally your energy is going to shift. Your confidence is going to rise and this is going to make you attractive. If you're with a woman and there's a problem, there's a situation or she's running around on you, she's cheating on you or she's not respecting you, she's taking you for granted, then sit down and talk to her. This is what I mean about taking responsibility. Stop blaming her. Sit her down and say, hey, babe, <laughs> what's going on? Is it something I'm doing? Is there something I can shift? Or what's the problem? Start talking to her, right? If you want some bedroom experience that you're not hap that, that's not happening right now, talk to her about it. If there's some other problem or some other issue, talk to her. Talk to her, talk to her, talk to her. Don't be desperate. Like, don't be like blowing up her phone and, oh, can I talk to you, please? Can I? No, just sit down and say, hey, look, I've got a problem. There's a situation. I'm not happy. I'm unsatisfied in some way. And we need to address this. Because the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to learn something about her that you may, you may already know, but you're not ready to face. Or... She's going to actually have more respect for you because you're sitting down and you're actually saying what's on your mind and you're taking lead. Okay? One of the main reasons, so why do women cheat? One of the main reasons, and I'm not making this up. This is by studies and surveys. So there were many surveys done on why women cheat and women who've cheated on their partners, you know, admitted a few things. They said this is why they cheated. One of the main reasons that women cheat was a lack of communication. In fact, most of the women who admitted that they cheated said that they spoke to their partner less than five minutes per day. So in that lack of communication, in that lack of connection, she's going to feel disconnected. And if some man comes around and offers her that connection and that communication, well, that's going to be tempting for her. So how is your communication skills? Are you scared to talk to your woman? Are you scared to sit her down? Are you scared to open up and be vulnerable? See, if you're scared to be vulnerable, if you're scared to talk, if you're scared to communicate, she's going to feel that and she won't know why and she's going to find it somewhere else. A second reason that women cheat is a lack of sex, frequency, and quality. Women who admitted that they cheated said that they were getting sex less than five times a month, while women who stayed loyal were getting sex more than 10 times a month or more, and they are enjoying the experience. The quality of sex was satisfying for them. Men are just like women in this regards. They want to be satisfied. They want to have a great sex life. So if you're not performing well in the bedroom or you're watching porn, you're masturbating all the time so you have no sexual charge and you can't actually perform with a real woman, then this is going to create a disconnection. And when she comes in contact with a man who has a higher uh, SMV, sexual market value, meaning he's ranked higher in her eyes on the social scale, more likely she's going to cheat or she's going to be tempted to spend the night with him or go behind your back and hook up with him. The obvious reason that women cheat is that they're not happy in the relationship. And this is something that we can look at as men and say, what is our part played in that process? Why is our woman not happy in the relationship? Here's something that you should know about women, especially women in this age, like right now in our modern age, that's different than the ages past. Women don't need you, <laughs> right? It's not, like, it's not like long ago where women needed you. Women don't need you. A woman now can get a job, start a business. She can provide for herself. A woman right now has more opportunity for sexual partners and sexual opportunities than you do. All she needs to do is create a profile online or make a post and she'll get a ton of validation and a ton of guys reaching out and connecting with her. Now, just because she doesn't need you 
doesn't mean that she doesn't want you. But you, again, have to take 100% responsibility and ask yourself, am I a man that a woman wants? The definition, I want to read the definition of hypergamy, which is the action of marrying or forming a sexual relationship with a person of a superior sociological or educational background. So in everyday language, women are attracted to men who they perceive as higher up in the social ranking. So when men are around that have higher social ranking than they, they are attracted to them. Now, if you just got nervous or you got scared or you just got down on yourself like, oh my goodness, you've got some insecurity issues that you need to work on and you need to stop blaming women. It's their psychology. What are they gonna, what do you want them to change? Don't want women to change. Ask yourself, how do I get better? How do I raise my own sexual market value? I'm going to give you three ways that you can raise your sexual market value so that you become attractive to the women around you. Now, I want to preface this with, okay, like for example, not every woman, woman is going to be attracted to you. I've had some guys go, I've been practicing semen retention. How come women aren't coming up to me? And I'm like, have you gone up to them? I mean, don't just expect women to fall over you and no matter what you do, for instance, if a woman is attracted to a blonde hair, blue eyed guy, it doesn't matter what I do, I'm not, I'm not in the game, right? This is what I mean about chasing and being thirsty. You have to have the attitude. There are so many women out there and some women like blonde hair, blue eyed guys and some like bald bearded guys, right? Me, I, I've got a better chance with the bald bearded category than the blonde hair, blue eyed guys. This is where again, you have to control the controllables and accept who you are. Don't try to change yourself to get a woman, improve yourself and become a man of value. So here's one thing that you can do. You can start working out. When you work out, first of all, your energy increases, you have more vibrancy, you look healthier. Also, as your physique develops, you are giving the physical signs of a protector. And as you give the physical signs of a protector, your woman is going to be more attracted to you or other women are going to be more attracted to you. Also, there's a little secret you should know about women. It's called pre-selection. You see, guys, we're like, you know, Anybody gives us the eye, we're good to go. It's funny, right? We wish we were in the women's position where we had endless options. Women have endless options. I said, all a woman needs to do is create a, an online profile and within three minutes, her, <laughs> she's gonna be blowing up with messages and hey, let's connect, right? A guy creates an online profile, meh, you know, maybe, maybe not, depending, you know, depending on di different aspects. But the point is, is that women are in the position where they can, get as many sexual partners as they want. But what's interesting is that they're way more selective than we are. As men, we don't have as narrow as of definition of what we find attractive, meaning what we find attractive has a very large range and scale. But a woman is actually more specific about what she finds attractive. Once you become attractive to a woman, this is pre-selection, once one woman finds you attractive, generally other women start to find you attractive, especially if other hot women find you attractive, because this sends at a subconscious level social cues that he is a worthy partner. That's why, you know, people are like, why do women like married men? You know, the guys tell us all the time, right? Oh, I can't get a date. I can't get a date. I can't get in a relationship. And then when they get in a date or they get in a relationship, all of a sudden they've got all these other women that want to be with them. It's because of pre-selection. You see at the subconscious level, they've just amplified themselves uh, on the sexual market value. You are showing by social proof that you are a good partner. So the more that you attract one, naturally other women are going to find that attractive. Work out because the more that you work out and the more that you are in good physical health and shape, you're going to send off those signals that you're a good protector. Number two, get better at your finances. It doesn't mean you have to become a millionaire. I mean, that's definitely not going to hurt you, <laughs> right? Um, but as you get better at your finances, 
you're also going to show the subtle signals of being a good provider. You're also going to show that you make good decisions. And it doesn't mean that, uh, again, that you have to be a millionaire or that you have to be super rich, but you want to get better at your finances. Because as you're able to provide more of a lifestyle, naturally you become a better provider and this is going to make you more attractive and so the woman or the partner that you're with she's going to you because you're going to be able to give her experiences because you guys are going to be able to do things because you're going to be able to amplify her lifestyle she's going to naturally want to stay with you but if you're making poor financial decisions all the time or you have no plan like when she looks at you and she doesn't see that you're going anywhere and she sees that this is it this guy's going to sit on the couch all day. He's going to play video games all day. By the time he's, you know, five years from now, he's going to, you know, be overweight. She's going to know that. And again, when another man comes around that has a higher SMV, she's going to be tempted to go with him because she's going to be looking for those experiences. She's going to be looking for someone who can supply her with a better lifestyle. Don't blame her. It's her psychology get better at what you do and both of you are going to have a better life. You're just going to feel better about yourself anyways. All of these things that I'm telling you to do, you may be doing it with the motivation of to get a partner, but the beauty is you're just going to feel better about yourself and you're not even going to care whether you have a partner or not because your own self-worth, self-image and self self-esteem is going to rise. And the last thing I'm going to share with you to do is to get involved in something that you're passionate about and that gives you the opportunity to potentially lead other people. Now, not everybody's going to become president. Not everybody's going to become CEO. Not everybody's going to become a celebrity. That's a, it's a rare thing that people become those things. But simply by getting involved with things that you're passionate about, one, you're gonna stop putting all your time into chasing women and you're gonna start to become more purpose-driven. As you become more purpose-driven and you start to lead other people, remember, women are attracted to leaders. Go right back to our tribe, right? Go back to when we were in the tribe. Who had the most sexual partners in the, on, the, on the male side of things? The leader did. Why? Because they were the best providers, they were the best protectors, right? They were leading other men, so they were attractive. So those, that same psychology is still embedded in us all. So as you get involved and you start to lead other men and you start to get involved with the community and you start to serve others and lead others, then you're going to be perceived as a leader and in this way, your sexual market value is going to increase. The woman that you're with, even if you've been with her for years, as you continue to rise in your leadership, she's going to find you more and more attractive. She may even give you that experience that you've been looking for. <laughs> but again, if you're doing nothing, if you're expecting her, I mean, if porn has distorted your mind where you're just expecting her to like jump on your, you know, jump on your junk and just fall all over you because you're her partner, you've got it all twisted. And she's going to get bored. And again, as soon as she comes in contact with other guys who are leaders, who are going somewhere, she's going to be attracted to them. And if it's come to a point in your relationship where there's a lot of disconnection or she's unsatisfied in the bedroom or she's unsatisfied emotionally, she's going to be tempted and she may act upon that temptation. The last thing I want to share with you is that women, unlike men, are much more emotional. They have a much more emotional experience. So what happens is a lot of guys think, well, I want to please my woman. I want to make her happy. And it's very noble. It's nice to say. But this is how you get put into the, oh, you're a nice guy. And you kind of fall into the friend zone or the sexual passion begins to die out. What most men try to do is try to always make their woman happy. She's feeling sad. You try to make her happy. She's feeling angry, you try to make her happy. I know, I've done this too. But I've learned over time that that's just women. Women are going to go up and down and round and round. Your job is not to go with them or be like a little puppy dog. Oh, can I make you happy now? Can I make you happy now? It's actually going to turn her off of you. What you want to do is just stay steadfast and be who you are. Show her that you're a solid rock that she can lean on 
and give her her experiences. Let her, let her stimulate her emotionally. If she's feeling down, then let her feel down. If she needs someone to talk to, then be an ear to listen to without trying to solve her problem. Just simply be there for her, but don't get caught up in her emotions. Now, how do you do all this? Well, this is where you have to become self-controlled, self-mastered, self-aware. That's what it means to be a man. From a spiritual perspective, to be a man, it means to be sensitive and sense-controlled. Sensitive doesn't mean I'm a sensitive guy and I'm going to do everything you want me to do to try to appease you. No, that's not sensitive. Sensitive means I can sense, I am sensitive, I can sense your emotions. You should be able to tell where your woman's at even if she can't tell where she's at because she's unconscious to it. So you're sensitive and you can feel that and you can help her there. Sense controlled means when she goes off in a mood, you don't go with her. You say, all right, go, go. I'm doing my thing. <laughs> you go over there. I'm doing my thing, right? Let me know if you need something or you know, you, you, you know how to control yourself so you don't get into a cat fight essentially with your own partner. When a woman is acting in an emotional way, and a man responds back in an emotional way, that's when arguments happen. That's when fights happen. But I promise you, if you just stay grounded, say, look, I'm not going to fight with you, so let's calm down, all right? When you're calm and you're clear-minded, let's talk again. Then give her that space. Give her that time. This is going to show her at an unconscious level that you are grounded and that she can trust you and she can lean on you and you're giving all the signs of a great provider and protector. Largely, your success with women in the bedroom actually comes from your habits outside the bedroom. Meaning, what's going on inside the bedroom has a large part, a large part of that has to do with who you are outside the bedroom. And then when you're in the bedroom, it's definitely gonna play a part, okay? If you want to increase your sexual market value, if you want to be a man that women want to be with, and you want to learn to be more solid in yourself and take control of your sex and relationship life, then go register for the webinar. Sex Mastery 101 is going to blow your mind. I'm going to be showing you how to become sensitive in the right way, sense controlled, how to last longer in the bedroom, and how to become a leader in this world. So go ahead and register. I'll see you inside the training, and I'll see you on the next video.